How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am now a third and final year medical student studying in Canada. Now being in my final year of medical school, there are going to be a few things that are going to be happening. So in addition to finishing up with clerkship, we're also going to be writing the first round of our board exams. And then finally, and probably most importantly for this video, we are just a few short months away now from the residency match application that's going to open up usually around the beginning of November. Now because I've decided to take you guys along for a residency matching and everything that's going to be happening in this last year, I thought that it would be a good place to start off today and take a look at the recently released 2021 match statistics from the Primes website officially to show you what the current match rates are for Canadian students looking to practice in Canada, for the international students, and also what the most competitive specialties are, the least competitive specialties are, and finally how medicine has changed over the course of the last five years and how that affects people like myself that are applying for this coming residency match. Basically, I'm gonna be giving you guys a look into my head as I go into the residency match. And as always, the timestamps are gonna be provided in the description below. Now, the first thing that most people are nervous about when it comes to the residency match is the actual match rate itself. This is the amount of people that apply to the match and end up with a residency position and don't have to go back to medical school and wait an entire year before they have to reapply to the residency match. Now, I'll be sure to link all of the official official sources in the description below, but for everyone that applied that was a current year graduate from a Canadian medical school in 2021, we had 2,854 applicants for a total match rate of 97.19%. Now that's assuming that they went through both the first and then second iterations of the match if they weren't successful in the first iteration of the match. Now you hear something like greater than 97%. What does that really mean? Because it sounds good when you first look at it, but I've also heard people say that residency matching for Canadian students is getting harder and harder every year. There's no spaces for residents. I've heard this online. I've heard this in person. So we're going to go ahead and compare it a little bit. If you do compare it directly to the 2021 match data for the American MD students, um, because here in Canada, we don't have DO students. So we'll compare them to the MD students for a second. We'll see that the American match rate was about 92.8% for all of their MD students, which makes me feel pretty good, actually. You could also go ahead and take it a step even further because the CARMS database actually records all of the match data going back years and years. So we could go back five years to 2016 when the match rate at the time for everyone that had just graduated that year from a Canadian MD school that was applying for residency, and the match rate at the time was about 97.2%. So what we could say for sure is that definitely the match rate from this last year hasn't been drastically lower, and in some cases was actually better than it has been historically. But we also need to take into account that it's not just Canadian students that are applying for Canadian residency positions. And if we go ahead and look at the IMGs, the Internationally Trained Medical Graduates, their match rate for the 20 21 cycle was also at an all-time high with a match rate of about 30%. Now I know I say all-time high and again that is only for the last three years since 2019. And 30% doesn't sound like such an impressive number but that average is actually brought down pretty drastically by students that have applied not only from their first year out but could have graduated two years ago, three years ago, four years ago and are applying for a residency now here in Canada. So the conclusions that we can make from all of this is that the match rates in Canada for this last cycle were actually at least from where I'm standing, very, very good relative to what they have been historically and then also relative to our neighbors down in the States. But they do not tell the full story. And I know a lot of you are already thinking, what about the more competitive specialties, the ones that make the top five most competitive medical specialties? I took a look at last year's list. And how does this year's list stack up? Did they get more competitive? Is it the same specialties? Well, we could take a look now. The way that we track how competitive a particular residency or medical specialty is in this data is by looking at what we call the R value. This is basically the number that we get by dividing the total number of residency positions by the number of applicants. So as the number of applicants go up and our number of spots stays the same, the program gets more competitive as an average. Now, when we look at the 2020 data, the most competitive medical specialties from 2020 that I had made the video on in the past, what we saw is that the top five were ophthalmology as the single most competitive, and then dermatology followed by cardiac surgery, emergency medicine, and finally the two-way tie between neurosurgery and plastic surgery. 
probably the most striking thing that I noticed when looking at this year's top five most competitive medical specialties was that not only was cardiac surgery not on the top five at all, but it's actually now one of the easiest medical specialties to get into as per the 2021 match data. The R value of cardiac surgery in 2020 was 0 0.59 and in 2021 it was a 1.00 which means that technically speaking every single person that applied for cardiac cardiac surgery had a spot that was available to them. Now, as for why this was the case with cardiac surgery in the 2021 cycle, to be totally honest with you, I'm not entirely sure, but there's a variety of different factors we could look at. On the one hand, cardiac surgery as a field is a very small field compared to something like family medicine, for example. Every single year, we have more than a thousand family medicine spots that are open as an average, whereas for cardiac surgery, we have, I believe it's somewhere in the teens, around 14 to 30, in that range there. The fact of the matter is that Canada as a country needs more family physicians right now than they do cardiac surgeons. And these smaller programs like cardiac surgery tend to be more susceptible to year-to-year -year fluctuations in their number of applicants versus the bigger programs like family medicine and internal medicine. In talking with some of my friends that are also medical students themselves, they've also suggested that another reason to explain this might actually be that cardiac surgery is one of the medical specialties that requires you to work one of the most amount of hours out of all of the specialties, and a lot of medical students might actually be transitioning to some of the more lifestyle specialties, which is why things like dermatology and emergency medicine are really, really competitive. The takeaway here is that you should never not apply to a residency position that you want in a specialty that you really want just because you're scared with how competitive it's been historically. Because truthfully, as we're seeing here, you never really know how competitive a specialty is going to be in the cycle that you're applying for. So to anyone watching this, if you want something competitive, don't hesitate just because you think that it's too competitive for whatever your CV looks like. Now, as for the most competitive medical specialties in 2021, I will put it up on the screen right now, right next to 2020, so you guys can make the comparison for yourself. But in order from the number one spot to the number five spot, we have otolaryngology, head and neck surgery at the very top. Then we have dermatology, ophthalmology, emergency medicine, and plastic surgery. Four of the five from last year ended up making the cut into the top five, but ENT, otolaryngology totally came out of nowhere to grab that top spot, showing that there is gonna be that variation from year to year. And once again, because CARMS and the way they collect data is so awesome, we could go ahead and look at a step even further beyond and look at the data now from 2016, five years ago, their top medical specialties by demand. At the very top, we had dermatology, which was very, very competitive back then and tied with plastic surgery. We also had psychiatry, the research track. So very interesting to see that that is nowhere near one of the most competitive nowadays. Uh, then we have emergency medicine and physical medicine and rehabilitation. So M and R. What will be really interesting now is to contrast the most competitive with the least competitive and you'll see from 2021 the least competitive, the top five least competitive medical specialties in Canada were general pathology where there were seven times as many spaces as applicants that wanted it as their first choice. Then there was nuclear medicine, neuropathology, psychiatry, the research tract, which made a total reversal from the top in 2016 to now way down at the bottom. And then finally, medical microbiology and the rest of the list there. I think it's really cool to see not only the advancements in medicine as time goes on, but also the way that people's attitudes towards different specialties change and the amount of spots that are open and how the residency match process goes. Because in my opinion, I think that reflects how medicine and how society in medicine changes as time goes on. The big takeaway from all of this is that you really can't predict from a year to year what things are going to be like. But the best thing that you can do, and the best thing that I can do in this case, is to structure your application as well as you can, do your best in medical school, get as many letters of recommendation as you possibly can, and find a way to include YouTube properly on your application, in my case. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you nerd out as much with these statistics as I do. I thoroughly enjoy going through the carbs presentation every single year. But as I said before, I will be taking you through my entire last year and my residency application and also the USMLE in addition to the Canadian exams I'm going to be writing. And I believe this is the first time on YouTube that I'm telling people that, yeah, I'm going to write the USMLE. So there's really um, no possibility of going back now. We're going to have videos coming out on that. I'll tell you guys why I'm writing that test, how everything's working in the last year. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Everyone take care.